Now let's go back to talking about the calligraphic brush settings. First, I'll click the New Brush button and make sure I have Calligraphic chosen and hit OK. And we'll start with a fresh brush. So far, we've only worked with the diameter setting and pressure sensitivity, and now we'll look at angle and roundness. To adjust these settings, I can click and drag on the circle diagram. And the angle of the brush only comes into play when your brush isn't perfectly round. So these dots here are handles you can drag to adjust the roundness of the brush. And then the arrowhead is a handle you can use to adjust the angle of the brush. And you can see the numbers below will update as I manipulate the brush tip diagram. And just so we can see the variation diagram on the right even better, I'm going to raise the diameter setting to make a really big brush. OK. And then I'll go back to the angle. To be precise, you can type in a number here, or you can hold the shift key while you spin the arrow around to change the angle in 15 degree increments. So I want the angle set at 45 degrees just to get that exactly right. And then I'll move this handle to adjust the roundness. So we get a very flat brush. And you can hold shift in this case too to control the roundness in 10% increments. And I want my brush roundness here to be 10%. OK, and then I could work with these variation menus for each option, just like we did with diameter. But for angle, I generally leave this at fixed, unless I'm using my art pen that has rotation capability. But most of the time, for my bamboo or Intuos tablet with the standard pen, I leave the angle at fixed. And I just create an assortment of brushes so I have a variety of angles to choose from. And this is what has always worked best for me with calligraphic brushes in Illustrator. Next, I'll name my brush starting with the diameter size and then I'll call it a chisel. And this way it's easy to identify once it's part of the list on my panel. And I'll hit OK. And then I'll just test out my brush with a little squiggle here. Now everything on this brush is fixed. Remember, there's no pressure sensitivity. And with a 45 degree chisel like this, if I draw at that 45 degree angle, and I'm going to hold the shift key here to constrain my line to 45 degree increments, I get a finer line on the 45 degree angle. And if I draw vertically, I get a thick line just by virtue of the angle. And if I draw horizontally, I also get a thick line. So this is why chisel tips like this are used a lot in lettering. And they're fun to play around with. And remember, when you have Keep Selected checked, you have the ability to draw and delete. Or you can use the Smooth tool by holding Option or Alt if you need to do some touch-ups. So lettering takes practice, of course, no matter if it's on paper or digital. but. The great thing about Illustrator is you have the advantage of being able to edit the paths and points after you draw your letters. And then this is where I like to go back to the Brushes panel, double click that brush, and change the settings a bit with Preview checked so I can see what will happen to the strokes I just drew. So this is a great way to learn about the variety you can get from these settings. And while you're experimenting, I recommend limiting yourself to using pressure variation on just one setting at a time, angle or roundness or diameter, because it's easier to evaluate the results that way. So I've started with everything at fixed, and I have a very flat chisel with a 45 degree angle. And we'll see what happens now when I adjust the roundness and add a little variation. And you can see how the letters begin to change. And also, notice the variation indicator here. It's now showing us how the brush gets more round with heavier pressure and flatter with a light touch. So do your own tests and get familiar with this. But really, you're going to see these concepts becoming more clear in action when we actually get to work on the project. And we'll make a set of brushes specific to the art we're working on. And that will add to your experience with calligraphic brushes. Now, if you're curious about the tilt and bearing settings here, and that's for folks who have an Intuos or Cintiq tablet, I'll just take a quick detour now to illustrate that for you. So tilt means how vertical or horizontal the pen is in space. And you also have bearing capability, which is referring to the direction the pen is pointing in. And these are more useful or more obvious here in Illustrator with the CS5 bristle brush. So I'm going to cancel out of this brush here so I can keep my original settings. 
and I'll select a bristle brush from the brushes panel. And although we're not really getting into bristle brushes in this class, it's actually a good way for me to illustrate those concepts of tilt and bearing for those who have an Intuos tablet because the bristle brush has an active brush preview on screen and you can see that next to my paintbrush cursor as I hover and then as I draw a little with the brush. Now the bristle brush is only available in CS5 and later versions and if you're using a bamboo you can use the bristle brush it just won't show a dynamic brush preview like mine does here so you won't see this dynamic cursor with a bamboo tablet but I'm showing you this only to illustrate tilt and bearing and talk about tablets in general a little bit so right now I have my pen resting in my hand on the tablet so it's at a shallow drawing angle in relation to the tablet. And now I'm tilting my pen straight up and down. So now it's perpendicular to the tablet. And you can see the change in the cursor as I move. Now it's back to the side. And here it's more straight up and down. And that's the tilt. And you can see as I make a line, it's broader or thinner depending on the tilt of my pen. Okay, I'll delete this, and now let's look at bearing. I'm keeping the tilt angle constant, and I'm pointing my pen to the left on my tablet, and like the hand on the clock face, I'm starting at 9 o'clock, and I'm just swinging up now, and my pen is now pointing straight ahead, 12 o'clock, and I'm right-handed. So then I go back to 9 o'clock, and then 12 o'clock. So that's bearing. It's the direction your pen is pointing in. So, tilt and bearing are at work simultaneously when you paint with a bristle brush. And try this out for yourself if you have CS5 and an Intuos or Cintiq tablet. So, tilt and bearing are great features to use with the bristle brush in Illustrator or with the tools in other programs with your tablet, and you should definitely experiment with them. However, when I'm working with calligraphic brushes in Illustrator, I feel I get more out of my tablet by focusing on pressure sensitivity. It's a setting that's easier to feel and control in your hand as you draw. And working with a standard tablet is really about hand-eye coordination because you can't always see your hand when your eyes are on screen. So tilt and bearing can be more of a challenge to control without a dynamic brush preview giving you feedback. But the better you get at using calligraphic brushes and the graceful variations you get from pressure sensitivity, the more you'll enjoy the fact that in Illustrator, fine-tuning the anchor points and the curve handles on your flowing line work makes anything you draw with the calligraphic brush incredibly editable and versatile. And that's a unique advantage in Illustrator. So that was just a quick peek at the bristle brush. And next, I'll be giving you the specifics for creating a set of calligraphic brushes that we'll be using in our next project. So meet me in the next lesson. In this lesson, we'll build a set of calligraphic brushes and save it in the libraries. Then we'll use the brushes we create in making this floral motif that we'll be tracing with the paintbrush and the blob brush. So to begin, create a fresh new document with a clean artboard any size, and we're going to delete all the current brushes on the brushes panel so we can start from scratch and create a custom library. So go to the brush options menu and make sure all of your brush types are visible. On mine, scatter is grayed out because there are no scatter brushes on my panel right now, so that's okay. And then choose select all unused. And then I can go to the trash can and just delete all the unused brushes. And Illustrator asks, are you sure? And I'll click yes. Now this basic line will stay here. You can't delete it. It's just the default uniform stroke for any path in Illustrator, so ignore that. But there is one calligraphic brush here that Illustrator won't let me delete. It's this five-point flat brush. So, you'll have difficulty deleting a brush if it's used elsewhere in the file, even if there's nothing on your artboard since we started with a new document. So if I try to delete this five-point flat brush here, Illustrator gives me a message that this brush is being used inside of a graphic style, 
and so it can't be deleted. Now, if you're creating and saving custom brush libraries, you don't really want to see this brush every time you open your saved library. So, I really want to delete this, and so I'll have to go down to the Graphic Styles panel and figure out which style here is the culprit. And I found it's this yellow one, and if I select it and then go to the Appearance panel, I can see right here it does have a five-point flat brush stroke in it, so this is the style that's getting in my way. So I'm going to go back to the Graphic Styles panel and it's still selected and I'll delete the graphic style using the trash can. And then I can go back up to my brushes panel and delete the brush. Okay, now we have a clean brushes panel. And don't worry about deleting these things, these brushes and graphic styles. These are the default sets and they will reappear the next time you launch Illustrator when you make a new document. And in Illustrator you can control what appears when you start a new document, but that's a subject for another time. Right now I'm going to give you the specifics for the brushes we're going to create. We'll make nine inking and coloring brushes for the floral art piece, and I'm showing the settings for the first three brushes here on screen, and just work on creating these brushes one by one in this order. Just remember, you'll start by hitting the new brush icon at the bottom of the brushes panel, choose calligraphic brush, and then you'll see the panel where you can copy the names and settings for each brush you see on screen, and then save the brush. We'll be discussing these brushes, and you'll understand more when we start using them in later lessons, but this first brush, the five-point round brush, is perfectly round, and it has maximum diameter variation with pressure sensitivity, so this is going to be a great all-purpose brush. The next two are the same point size, but these are more chisel shaped, and so they can create a ribbon-like line even without varying the pressure, just by virtue of the angle, and I'll talk more about this later. But go ahead and pause now to create these three brushes, and then restart when you're ready. All right, and now we have the next three brushes, starting with another five-point brush. This one is at an angle also, but this angle is a little bit shallower than the other two. And then we have a seven-point angle brush and a seven-point round brush. So again, a very pressure-sensitive round brush, which will be very versatile. So pause to create these brushes and restart when you're ready to move on. Okay, and now for our final trio of brushes, we have a 15-point fixed coloring brush. No pressure sensitivity, just good for making smooth shapes and filling in large areas of color with the blob brush. And a 20-point with pressure sensitivity. And then we have a leaf texture brush. This is something we'll use later for making small one-stroke leaves. And this brush uses pressure sensitivity on both the diameter and the roundness. So it starts out with a bit of flatness at an angle, and then with more pressure, it becomes round. So pause to create these brushes and restart when you're ready to move on. Okay, so now you should have nine new brushes in your panel. I'll go ahead and make these a list view so we can see them better. And we're going to save these as a library. When you save a library in Illustrator, everything that's currently on your brushes panel will be included in the library, and so that's why we started out by deleting the extra brushes from the brushes panel. So go down to the library's menu at the bottom of the panel and choose Save Brushes, and then give your brushes a name. I suggest Ink Paint Calligraphic, and that way we can remember that the set came from this class, and hit OK. And then back in Illustrator, you can find them in the library menu under User Defined. And there they are. And then you'll see them on a library panel, so next time you want to load them, just click the brushes to add them to your brushes panel. Now, by default, Illustrator should save these automatically to the right folder on your system, but if you have any trouble with this, I've also included a mention of it in the PDF with the directory path of where they should be saved on your system, so check the PDF lesson guide if you need to. And now, with your new calligraphic set saved in the user-defined brush libraries, meet me in the next lesson and we'll start working with them.
Okay, now for the fun part. There's a project file for this floral artwork included in the download, so go ahead and open the file LC Ink Paint Floral for your version of Illustrator. The file extension is AIT, so this is a template file and you'll need to give it a name and save it. This is a layered file and at the bottom there's a pencil sketch for tracing. It's an embedded image. And this layer here is a template layer, so it's dimmed to 50% and it's locked. Then I've organized the project into these layers above for line work and for coloring of the different elements in the design. There's also a solid color background that you can turn off and on and it sits just above the sketch layer. And we have global swatches on the color panel so you can get up and running with some nice color and the global swatches make it easy in case you want to make changes. The next step is to load the brushes we created in the last lesson. So go to the libraries menu on the brushes panel and choose user defined, locate your saved brushes and then to add them to your panel hold shift and then select the first and last brush and then go to the options menu and choose add to brushes. So we're going to work on the outline for this main flower here in the center and I've zoomed in on it and we're going to start with the paintbrush. The shortcut is B. So I've got my paintbrush and I want the seven point angle brush tip. I want dark purple for my color and then most importantly I want to make sure that I'm on the flower line layer. This is the very top layer here and then I can just go ahead and start following the tracing. Certainly doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and I, let's see, I can delete here if I don't like a line. And when I'm doing this, I like to work from light pressure to heavy pressure. It's easier for me to control it this way, going from light to heavy, rather than going from heavy to light. It's just a little, you kind of have to lift your pen up and it's, it's not as easy to be precise. So light to heavy is how I like to work. And then you can just go around here and and it doesn't certainly doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, it's sort of fun to just let what happens happen. Okay. And I believe that my fidelity and smoothness setting is somewhere close to 3 and 15. So I've got smoothing going on, which is good. And then when I get a situation like this, I can always hold down command or control and squeeze it up a little bit. If I just want to make that point meet a little better there, that's the thing I love about working with calligraphic brushes and illustrator is that it's very easy to make the kind of edits um, that are just very simple to make and, and can salvage a line that is close to perfect but not quite what you want. Okay, and then I can always turn off the sketch layer. Let's see, deselect that to see what I've got here. And then if I select this and hold Option or Alt, I can make that curve a little nicer, go through here, and maybe just stretch a little bit where I want the points to meet up a little bit better. Okay, I'll do this one over here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is switch to the flower background layer. We're going to be working on the flower background next and then I'm going to turn the sketch on and for this I want to use the blob brush. I'm just going to draw this big shape here. So I'll go ahead and use shift B to switch to the blob brush. I'll select the 15 point fixed coloring brush tip and I want to use for my color medium pink. Let's see right here. And making sure I'm on the flower background. Okay so now I'm just going to, this is a a big fat brush and it doesn't use pressure sensitivity so it's a big fat uniform stroke it's actually really good for filling in large areas of color like this and I don't care if I go outside the lines because I like for things to look a little off register I think it just makes it look more more fun which is great for a floral piece like this okay and so now I want to 
delete this center point rather than going and coloring all this in. But first I really need to switch to my white arrow and then I can go back to my paintbrush, or I'm sorry, my blob brush tool, which is shift B. And now when I toggle with command or control, I've got the white arrow. So I can select this center shape and delete it. Next, I want to make an outline around this flower background shape here just to add a little bit of contrast between this color and the background color eventually. And you'll see that when I show it to you. But to do this, I'm going to stick with the blob brush. I'm going to use the 15 point fixed coloring brush and I'm going to switch my color here and make sure everything's deselected and then I've got my stroke color here. I'm going to switch it to this green gold color and then I'm going to take it down to 50% just to make a lighter color so it's a little bit better contrast. And then I'll just draw around here and and if you're using CS5 this is a great time to use the draw behind mode. If not you can just draw the shape and then send it to back. But for CS5 users go over here to the bottom of the tool panel and choose draw behind and so this is like the reverse of the usual default mode of drawing and so as I do this it's just appearing behind the shape and again this doesn't have to be exact or perfect I'm trying to avoid hitting too close to some of these outer flowers here so that I don't crowd them out when we go back to draw those later Okay, great. So that's draw behind. And of course you want to remember to switch back to draw normal after you use that. And you can see when I turn on the background color layer, you can just see it just adds a little bit of contrast there, which is nice. Okay, next we're going to work on some of the center details. And if I turn off the flower background layer, you can see these center parts are what we're going to work on next. And to help us with this, I'll turn back on the flower background layer. Right now it's obscured the sketches with the stuff that we've already drawn. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and dial back the opacity of this entire layer. And to do that, I just need to go to the flower background layer and hit this target here. And what this does is it selects everything on the layer, uh, but it also allows you to apply a different opacity setting to the entire layer so that everything you draw on the layer will be in that particular opacity setting. So I've targeted the layer and now I'm going to go up to the transparency panel and just dial this back. It doesn't have to be anything perfect. Let's see 25. I'll get it around 30 percent there. Okay so now we can see through what we've already drawn to the sketch below and then I want my blob brush which I have selected and then my 15 point fixed brush and then let me make sure I'm going to deselect here and then I'm going to go ahead and select this outer shape that we just drew and that just adds it to my color panel here. So when I start drawing again I already have that color selected so that's what I'll be drawing with. Just follow this outline here and then you can see it turns to the transparent color once I release. Now I'm going to do one more shape here and this one I'll use medium purple. So I've got the right brush. I've got my blob brush, my 15 point tip and then I'm going to change my color to medium purple here. Let's see that's purple. Medium purple. Okay. All right. And now that I've done this, I don't really need this transparency anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and restore the transparency of the flower background layer. I'm just going to click on that target and then up to the transparency panel and just pull that all the way up to 100 and then deselect. Okay. And now that everything's at 100% opacity, I can see I need to change this. So I have it on medium purple but it's at 50%. It's just taking the same percentage as that green gold color. So I'm going to go ahead and darken that up 
to 100% medium purple. And next we have some more center detail to do. And I'm gonna go a little bit different than the sketch here. I'm just gonna put some dots in the center. And to do this, I'll choose the paintbrush. I'll get the seven point round tip. And this has a variable pressure for the, for the, uh, for the diameter. And for the color, I'll choose dark purple. Now, when I click here, and I'm on the flower background layer, when I click here, depending on how hard I press, I get different size dots. And it's actually kind of hard to control, which is why I'm using the paintbrush so we can just sort of draw and delete, since I have keep selected on the paintbrush and not on the blob brush. So just go through and draw some dots of different sizes and delete the ones you don't like. Now we'll start doing a little detail on the petals. We're still on the flower background layer. And for this, I'm gonna use the paintbrush, which I have selected. And then I'll go over and choose, let's see, before I've got one selected there, so I wanna deselect by clicking on the artboard, and I'm gonna choose the 20 point pressure coloring brush. And for my color, I'll use deep pink for this. And I'll just be doing a little stripe in the middle of each flower petal here. From light pressure to heavy pressure. And because this is a 20 point brush and it really it really has a wide variation there in the stroke that you get. You know, you, it may take a minute to sort of get the hang of it and get the, the ones that you want from light to heavy. It's just like putting a stripe in the middle of each petal. Okay, and now for our last little bit of petal detail, I'm gonna switch to, let's see, now I'm gonna keep the paintbrush actually, and then I'm gonna get this round brush here. Let me deselect, and then the five point round brush. So I've got my paintbrush, the five point round brush tip, and for my color, I'm gonna select light pink, but I'm gonna make it even lighter, changing this to 50%. This will give us enough contrast here so we can see it against the pink flower and again I'm just going light to heavy here and putting a little detail in between each petal just a little extra line work Let me fix that one a little bit Okay, so now we've finished the main flower in the center and it's looking pretty sweet against this green gold background. And we're gonna move on next to do the leaf and stem line art. In this lesson, we'll be working on the greenery around the central flower, the vines and the leaves and we'll be using the paintbrush for the whole lesson because it results in paths that are easy to edit by tweaking the curve handles, which is what you need for line work like this. Also, everything will be in just one color, deep sage, so that simplifies things. And I've adjusted the opacity of my sketch too. To do this, just double click on the sketch layer to get its options and adjust the percentage here. Mine is now set to 30% and then hit OK. And I have my fidelity and smoothness settings for the paintbrush at three pixels and 20%. So I have more smoothing going on right now, which is helpful for drawing a long vine or stem like this long line here. And I've locked the two layers we worked on in the last lesson, so I won't disturb the flower as I work. 
and we're working on the leaf line layer now. We'll be focusing on four different calligraphic brushes that are good for line work like this. They're all the same size, these five point brushes here, and all of these have the diameter variation set to the maximum, so they're very pressure sensitive. The difference is in the angle and roundness. We have a perfectly round brush, then a 45 degree angle brush leaning to the right, and a 45 degree angle leaning to the left, and a shallow angle brush. So why so many different five point brushes? Well, the most versatile is the round brush. It's an all purpose brush. And here's a line that starts out light and then I'm using average pressure throughout. And there's some thickness variation happening, but if I want a more undulating quality to my line width, I have to vary the pressure as I draw from light to heavy and back to light like this. And you can see the second line has a little more variation. So a round brush is very versatile, but for a long line like this vine here, I wanna try and draw it in a single stroke. And sustaining a line this long while varying the pressure in your hand back and forth is a little more challenging. So that's why an angle brush might be a good choice for a line like this, because a brush with an angle is gonna give you a more ribbon-like varied line regardless of the pressure you use, just by virtue of the angle. So here's my original round brush line, and I'll delete this one here. And then with the five point right angle tip, and I'm just using sort of even average pressure, the line is more varied because of the angle of the brush tip. And we have two 45 degree brushes here, so that when you draw with the right angle brush, you'll get the finest lines going in this diagonal direction up and to the right, in the same direction as the brush tip goes in. And the lines are thicker going in the opposite direction. Then with the left angle brush, you have the reverse. So you get finer lines going at the same angle as the brush, and they are thicker going at the opposite angle. Okay, so that's a little background on the brushes, but really it's good to try them out on the tracing and see which ones you like to use. There's absolutely no right or wrong way. Okay, so now we're gonna work on this long vine here. I have my paintbrush selected. I have the five point, let's see, right angle brush selected. My color is deep sage and I'm just about ready to paint this line here, but one more thing I wanna do is jump over to my paintbrush options, just double clicking on the paintbrush. For this line, I'm going to check edit selected paths, and that's gonna help me to be able to draw this line in segments. I like this feature uh, for when you have to do a line and add on to it. Okay, so I can go along here, and if I need to change the position of my hand, I can just keep adding on to the line as I go. And I really like trying to do light pressure at the end. It's hard to get a fine uh, stroke uh, with this angle here at the end, but I kind of have to live with that. Um, and then to do editing when I go back over this line, I'm gonna use um, Option or Alt to get the smooth tool, just because editing with the paintbrush, when you have edited, edit selected paths checked, um, can wind up redrawing your whole line and ruining everything you just drew. So I prefer to use the smooth tool in a case like this. Okay, not too bad. All right, then I'm gonna go back and uncheck that option because I don't wanna have that going forward here. Okay, and I'm gonna keep the five point right angle brush and just continue on here drawing some lines and filling out the design with some of these leaves here. And then of course I can always make those tiny little edits as I go. I'll do that one again. Trying to go from light to heavy pressure wherever I can. I'll move this one over a bit. 
And right now I actually have my Wacom software here and the tip feel is set to just one tick above the center mark. Um, and what I'm seeing here is kind of thick line work where I'm having to use a light stroke here. So this is a case where I might adjust it or, or stick with it as it is, but it's always good to have your Wacom tablet software open in case you need to make adjustments like that. That way you can kind of stick with this five point brush and uh, make adjustments with the Wacom software without having to create a new brush. And for this leaf here, I might use the shallow angle. And over here I'll try the left angle brush. These leaves that are slightly pointing towards the left are a good opportunity to use the left angle. Sometimes for the little curls here I like to use the round brush so I can make each end taper and then just make little adjustments here. And then I always like to go and turn off the sketch so I can see how I'm doing so far and then go back to work. So I'm just going to speed up the video a bit here and get through all of the green line work that we need for this. It's all in sage green. Now I should say as I'm working on this you don't have to follow the sketch exactly particularly when we're dealing with the interior parts of the design here but when you get to the edges like this um, you'll want to try and keep as close to the sketch as possible because later I'll be showing how this motif can work as a repeat pattern. So keeping the outer edges of the design to the sketch is going to help make this unit fit like a puzzle piece with the other parts of the design when it's repeated. And then don't forget you can always work with the curve handles here. You just need to go back and select your white arrow, then select your paintbrush, and then when you toggle, you'll have the white arrow available and you can adjust the curve handles a little bit. Okay, so it looks like I've gotten all of the outlines for the leaves and the stems done. Let me go ahead and check and see Okay, so we've finished all our leaf line work and before we move on, while we're on the subject of line work, I want to make sure I refresh your memory on a couple of things I've talked about in my other classes that relate to what we're doing here. First, all the strokes we've been drawing so far have a one point stroke setting on the stroke panel and that's the default. But you can take a line that you've drawn, like this one that I drew with a five point calligraphic brush, and if you raise the stroke setting in the stroke panel to two points, you're effectively doubling the weight of your brush stroke. So now this five point stroke is looking more like a 10 point stroke. So if you ever need to quickly thicken a stroke in big jumps like this, you can change the number in the stroke panel and it's like applying a multiplier to the current brush stroke. But I generally like to keep this at one point and change my brush or make a new thicker brush instead so I don't get confused. And also remember in preferences you have the scale, strokes, and effects checkbox. And I'm leaving this unchecked right now because so far I'm only making very tiny scaling adjustments to some of the lines I've drawn just to help things line up here and there. So when you leave the scale, strokes, and effects checkbox unchecked, you can make those tiny edits with the bounding box and maintain the same thickness of the stroke. So you'll be keeping that default one point stroke throughout your file. But if you need to scale something more substantially, leaving that checkbox unchecked and not scaling your strokes can distort things too much like this. So when you need to enlarge or reduce lines more substantially, you may want to go ahead and check the scale strokes checkbox. Then when you reduce a stroke like this, the line weight scales proportionately and you can see that in the point size change here on the stroke panel. 
So that's just a couple of things to keep in mind about how the stroke weight works with calligraphic brushes in Illustrator. So go ahead and work on your own line work, take your time, and then meet me in the next lesson and we'll continue.